Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In our previous video, when I was explaining about Swagger, I meant it offers both human readable and machine readable format for documentation. So we looked at the human readable option, which is Swagger UI. And what is this machine readable format for documentation? That is what we are going to do now in this tutorial. In this video, we are going to see how Swagger UI helps you to generate a machine readable documentation and we are going to use that to dynamically generate a client in Spring Boot project. So when you click on this URA here, localhost 9091 v2 API docs, it's going to give you the entire Swagger specification in a JSON format. So you could see here, right? Everything about the, the endpoint details, the parameters, the responses, the object details, everything has been generated into us JSON. What we're going to do is put this into a new Spring Boot project, which is going to act like someone who's going to consume our employee profile API. We are going to generate the clients dynamically in the consuming project so that we don't have to manually create client objects like employee and API details, etc. The new Spring Boot example project, which is going to consume the employee profile API. So a simple project with just web starter in it. And I have a, an example controller, there's nothing here. And config and the Spring Boot application. In my application.yaml, I just have mentioned the port as 1992. The 9091 port is currently used by the employee profile API and it is up and running. So what we'll do now is like we'll go and copy the JSON and put it into our resources folder. Copy this entire JSON that has been generated from the Swagger UI and then we'll paste it inside the employee profile api.json which I have created. Okay, just copy paste it here and it will be inside the resources folder. Alright, now what we are going to do is like we are going to use Swagger CodeGen. This Swagger CodeGen is available for you to make use of generating the clients dynamically inside your project. So let's quickly take a look at that. Just go to Google and search for Swagger Cogen Maven plugin. You should be able to get a GitHub uh, repo of this Swagger Cogen Maven. So here's the details that you have to incorporate in your project in order to generate the clients from a YAML or a JSON file. Okay, so you need to add this plugin. There are lots of configurable items provided in this Swagger Cogen Maven plugin. You can use them to generate whatever things that you want to do here. So these are the available configurations that you can actually use, make use of. And they have even given you an example configure how you have to um, and I use the YAML or the JSON to generate uh, the clients. Okay, so you could see here the input spec is going to contain the file path of your uh, YAML and your language. Uh, you can even have your customized Java class which will generate the language for you. And then where you want this output to be generated, where you want the API packages to be generated, if you want the models to be segregated, and then there's invoker packages. So all these are available here. And there's another link which will give you details about what are the different languages and frameworks that are supported. For example, let's take Java. It supports everything, almost everything. Jersey, it supports uh, Fain, it supports REST template, supports REST EC. So there's a lot and lot of support available here. This, this document is pretty huge. And if you go through this document, you'll get lots of ideas of, about how to do this. So now let's try to incorporate this inside our Spring Boot project and let's try to generate the clients. Okay, so we have this project here. Let's go to our pom.xml. So in the pom.xml, uh, I have my starter web, the swagger annotations, uh, then, then let's go to the plugin. So I have created a uh, the Swagger Cogen plugin uh, inside the build plugins uh, uh, inside the pom.xml. So I've created as mentioned in the document. So I created my input peg, which is going to be my employee profile api.json, which is placed under the resources folder. So the source folder is going to be slash main dot main slash Java, and I want just the interface. Uh, it has to be in Java eight, 
and the output is going to be inside the generated folder generated source folder so if you come down when you know the execution logic of how it is to be generated all these things are mentioned here like for example the language has to be java the library has to be rest template for example if you want it to be fain you can do this it will generate a fain client for you so now i want it to be a rest template so the library is going to be rest template for me i wanted the model to be generated inside this package and the api is to be generated in this package the invoker is to be generated into the invoker packages i don't want test to be generated so i'm mentioning the generate api test as false so this is pretty much that you have to do once this is done then go to the maven window in intellij and you could see here generate sources and update folders for all projects just click on that once this is completed you'll see a target folder being created and let's go inside this target folder to see what is the api that has been generated so you as mentioned by us there is a generator iphone sources here let's go to this main java and you could see here the employee profile api has been generated here so it has our delete employee using delete uh, fetch all employees using get and then we have fetch employee by department there is an invoker classes which is going to be used to invoke this api we'll be using this actually and then we do have the model as well as the error responses generator now do you see the ease of using this you don't have to cre manually create this or you don't have to manually do a lot of work in order to consume an api all you have to do is like put this json or yaml and add the swagger uh, code gen maven plugin and it will automatically generate it for you so what you're going to do is like now let's go ahead and let's use this to make a call to our employee profile api and let's see how it works okay so for this right first what i'm going to do is like in my applications.yaml i'm going to define the host details of the employee profile i'm just going to define a, a key So it's going to be nineteen ninety one. All right. And in my example config, what I need to do is like I need to set up this base path, the you the host information that we mentioned in our application.yaml in my config. So for this, since our API client is going to be our invoker, I'm going to create a bean of that. So you have it here. Let's create a bean of that. Return the new API client dot set base path. And you could see here there's a lot of configurations that are available for you to make use of. Like once you dig in deep inside this site, there's a bunch of elements available for you to make use of. So for now we'll just do the base path here. And this is going to be, it's going to read from the key. So what we'll do is like private string. Post info. So this is done now let's again create a bean for the employee profile controller api so we are going to use this right so let's create a bean for this but how would this employee profile controller api get the information about base path all this thing so for that what you can do is like just copy this and inject it into the uh, object creation of the employee profile controller api now all these things are interrelated and correlated okay so now let's go to our controller what we're going to do is like we are going to auto wire this employee con profile controller api 
and then we are going to create a get mapping which is nothing it's going to return an object Let's do one thing. Let's get one employee by name. Perfect. So now this is done. So we have created all the things. So what you'll do is like for now, let me do one thing. Let me start the server now. Okay, so our server has started at 1992. And before we hit this endpoint, let's make sure that our employee profile API is running. All right, so employee profile API is also running in 1991. Okay, so now let's go to the browser. All right, you could see here we have got the response from the employee profile API. All right, so since it is in debug mode, we got the debug pointer here. Let's examine into this employee object and you could see here, we have got all the information for the employee John. So this is how you use Swagger code gen to integrate your Swagger documentation and generate clients, which you can seamlessly use to make a call to a different API. Now, you don't have to manually go create different object sets, different APIs details in your project in order to make a call to a, uh, the end client. So you don't have to create multiple REST templates using REST template builders. All you have to do is like uh, get the swagger, put it in your resources folder, and then generate it and make use of it. You see how easy it is to do this. This is one of the biggest advantages of Swagger Code Gen Maven plugin. If you have not looked at this example so far, I request you to go ahead, do this example, and then you'll understand the benefits of using this in your project. Thanks for watching, guys, and please subscribe for more such videos.